we're outside Westvale church we're just walking around to show you a bit around when i was younger we used to play in all these grounds and have um rounders matches against all the different kids i always remember coming to church with my mum of a sunday and we'd always have to wait for the 151 then the bus has been took off now it used to come around and sunday service i remember always thinking oh can't we just go home why have we got to come here and you know and all my mates are doing other stuff but i used to have to come here with my mum. i really used to do my head in okay we're just outside Ruffwood school on Ruffwood drive um i've got loads of funny memories um i don't know if you can say the good memories because it was probably really naughty within them but they were um, some of them were funny to me and good and when i was in this school <clears throat> we used to come in we used to get our mark and then we used to sneak around here all these fences weren't here then and they used to have a camera over there it's not there now and we used to come running down here with our coats over our heads and get out the gates <clears throat> but before we get out the gates we've done lots of naughty things within this school and i weren't very nice to the teachers actually sometimes i cringe now that um <clears throat> how cheeky I was but my sister went to school with me as well our Joanne and she um, I couldn't get away with much because she was just really good really good too good I used to say and I couldn't move I couldn't do anything wrong my mum would know everything uh, but it got to a point where I wouldn't care who knew what I just had this mindset on me and I just went down the wrong path and I think from about mm, 11 I stopped going to first year of here. I'd say I think I stopped going around church and rebelled about uh, going to church. Got in with the wrong crowd, and um, turns out every mother's nightmare, really. Right, we're on Rockford Avenue. These new builds all used to be flats. Um, I think I must have been about 16. I'd left school um, and I was doing an apprenticeship in hairdressing. Um, I was doing all sorts. I think I was pinching at this point from the hairdressers as well. Um, and that was just for stuff like speed and stuff like that. So at this flat, one day we were all offered heroin by older lads. I think we started taking heroin at this flat after a number of times of being offered it. And me and this lad, we always said no um, for a while after. And then I sort of give in to that. And he didn't for a while after. And now he's really bad. He's in a bad way now because he's still um, on heroin like many of the people from that flat are. So I'm told. Um, and then as soon as I started taking that my life just deteriorated I'd done stuff that I never could see myself doing like pinching from shops and just pinching from my mum and doing all sorts of stuff for me people look at me now and say we can't believe you know that you were like this and some people don't even know half of the stuff you know they look at me and that puts me up because I think wow you know what, what could have happened but didn't um, has amazed me Right, so we're outside Gaywood Green Heights, a flat on the sixth floor um, here that I used to live. My very first flat, actually, um, when I was 18. I had Demi while I was at this flat. Um, I think we lived here till we was about, Demi was about two, one and a half, two, and then I, I moved somewhere else. But there's a lot of memories in this flat. Um, and the lifestyle I led while being in this flat was just chaotic. It wasn't the worst that I'd got to because there was ways to come when I moved to my my, my next property but um, this is where it all began really and I used to have a chaotic lifestyle all kinds of different people coming round me up to all kinds of different things um, lots of stuff and drug taking and everything else that goes on all kinds of scary things happening people coming through the door to rob us kicking the door oh really frightening stuff that's gone on in this um, flat and when I look back and I think about the protection that's been around me the stuff that could have happened not just with the drug abuse but the actual physical stuff that's gone on and people have been hurt and I've always come out unscathed and not really you know happening to me when I, I, I sit back and, and think well, it, it just amazes me and there's not once I ever think now as a Christian why did I go through all them things for 12 years or I feel totally set free I don't have any guilt around anything 
I do. I know it was wrong. I admit it was wrong. Um, I tell people it was wrong. I did have some funny times and some some funny things. I laugh. That's been happened. I've been kidnapped by my family and locked up. They thought they were doing the right thing. Um, yeah, so God had a plan and purpose for me, which amazes me, and he used me to this day, and I'm prepared to be um, used and go wherever God wants me to go. And now my children have got the chance to know God as well, and other people I know sometimes just get hit over their heads with the Bible, because that's just what I like doing. So. <laughs>